In this session, we are going to learn a cool technique of dealing with deadlocks. I have read some uh, books on multi-threading and also seen a lot of videos on it, but I have never seen anybody else uh, mention this technique. Uh, but this is a really cool technique. So let me first show you uh, the program I have. So here I have list of transactions called failed transactions. It's a it's a list of tuples which has source account, destination account, uh, the amount to be transacted, and something called transaction ID. And I have a, I have an account class. You know all these things if you have seen my couple of previous sessions. Uh, this is just modification over those things. So this is an account class. It has account ID, account ba balance, and then property to get ID, property to get balance, and then it has a constructor uh, taking account ID and starting balance, and setting those values in respective variables. And then I have this transfer method which tracks the transaction object. Transaction object is nothing but a tuple. Uh, previously, in previous sessions, I had only three values in this tuple. I have added one more value here called transaction ID. So first value source account, then destination account, then the amount, and then the transaction ID. And then I have two flags to know which locks were actually acquired. Then I am using monitor. And in previous session, we are using monitor enter function. But in this session, we are using monitor try and enter method. The speciality of try and enter method is it provides one more uh, parameter called timeout. So it has three parameters. Uh, it has multiple overloads, but the particular overload I am using has three parameters. First parameter is the object to be locked on, reference to the object to be locked on. Second parameter is the timeout value in milliseconds. I am providing just one millisecond timeout. And then the last parameter is the flag to know whether the lock was really, really acquired. So I am acquiring lock on first item, then I am acquiring lock on second items, and if both locks were acquired, then I am actually performing real transfer, and then I am introducing delay of 3 milliseconds to um, represent the real life delay in processing, and also to increase chance of deadlocks, because we want to see deadlocks here. Now, what I am doing, if the if one of the locks was not actually acquired because you know another thread has that lock uh, and in which case it usually causes deadlock situation here what I am doing is I am printing out message saying this transaction with the fourth um, fourth uh, you know uh, the parameter of the tuple which is the transaction ID. I am printing the transaction ID and saying this transaction timed out and then I am adding that transaction to the failed transactions list. I am doing same thing if in case any exception occurred in the process and adding it to failed transaction list and then finally if the locks were taken I am exiting the monitors. Now if you look at my main function I have created these two accounts uh, with 1000 balance and then uh, we are creating two threads just like before and we are starting both the threads to the start of first thread we are passing i which is the uh, current count of uh, the iteration of the loop as a transaction id for first transaction for second transaction we are just adding 1 million to i so that you know our two transactions are 1 million uh, transaction ideas are 1 million apart and then I am uh, waiting for both the threads to finish and then finally I am printing round uh, transaction and uh, the round ID and ending balance of the accounts. And then finally when the for loop is over I am printing running timed out transaction. So here I am in for each loop I am going through the failed transactions and rerunning those transactions here. So this is the technique of dealing with deadlock so we avoided deadlock situation by introducing timeout but since we introduced timeout some transactions are going to timeout which previously would have deadlocked and which is very bad so we are instead of deadlocking them we are timing them out and then we are dealing with those failed transactions due to timeout after uh, our all our transactions uh, attempts are over so it's like re-attempting the same transactions that fail so that in second attempts there is less chance of deadlocks and this is a technique so let's build this 
and let's run it and that's excellent if you go up you would see the transaction started and 1 million month transaction was timed out then um, 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10th didn't time out, 11th, 12th, 13th again, again timed out. You know, so you would see if you go through this list, you would see that some transactions succeeded and some timed out. And then we are rerunning the transactions that were timed out. So here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we are rerunning, 10th didn't time out. So we are not rerunning, then 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th didn't time out, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. So like that, we are rerunning re all the transactions that failed out and finally we are done. Excellent.